Hello, one and all. This is Luckless Lovelocks, and welcome to Cultist Simulator. This is the latest game by Alexis Kennedy. If you're familiar with him, he created Fallen London and Sunless Sea, both games that feature amazing writing and amazing worlds to explore. And this game isn't any different. Um, it's kind of a weird game. It's card-based, and it's real-time slash pausable. And it kind of has three main aspects to it from the little bit that I played on stream. Played for about an hour or two just to get a sense for how the game works. Um, you're kind of trying to survive, make it from day to day, make money, so on and so forth. Um, another aspect to it is that you're trying to build up your cult. So you're trying to find contacts, develop your agents, spread the web of the cult out uh, throughout the city. And also you're exploring the unknown. So you're... Um, Exploring, like finding it pieces of lore and then dreaming about them and trying to expand your consciousness by by exploring the unknown parts of, of the mind and the city and so on and so forth. So I'd like to thank Weather Factory for providing me with a copy of the game to play for you. If you want to check it out, uh, there's going to be links in the description to uh, the Humble Store and Steam if you're interested in buying it. Without further ado, let's begin Cultist Simulator. Says Aspirant, alone in this chilly city with my useless education and my dreams. What now? Could I become something more? And we're going to start out by naming ourselves. I'm going to be a luckless love locks, the Aspirant. And uh, it's kind of cool if you check in the options section. It's just this game is just filled with flavor. It says preferences vary. The Red Grail, among others, has taught us that. And there's this one option that I'm not really sure what it does. And there's a lot I don't know about this game. And part of the idea behind this game is like, is trying things out, trying to remember what the results are, and then using those results to further whatever, whatever goals you have in the game. Um, and then there's this option bird worm, which I still don't know what it does. Don't tell me, <laughs> don't tell me what it does. Because I, I one thing I love about this game is the mystery. And there's a few symbols at the bottom here. Um, we've got uh, heart, which is your health. We've got uh, coin, which represents your money. And I wonder what these two symbols mean. It's like an open and closed eye. And we're actually literally on a tabletop here. And there's kind of, uh, you'll notice that we have two cards. And one of them's not really a card. It's more like, um, like a verb or an action that we can use cards on. So the first card that we start with is menial employment. It says a precarious position as, as a hospital porter. Miserable, but it's all you can find just now. And every card has a certain number of aspects. This one has aspect job, and it gives you a sense of how you can use the card in the game. Uh, aspect job means an arrangement to exchange one's life for money. <laughs> Interesting way to put that. You notice there's some buttons in the bottom right here too where we can um, get time moving, we can make it move fast or at normal speed. So this is where the possible real time part comes in. This other card is uh, our verb or action. It says earn a living or practice the invisible arts. So we can drop our cards into here. And if you pick up a card, it will highlight the verbs or actions that you can use them with and uh, also the slot if you have it open. Another shift at the hospital. The other kind of cool thing about this game is that you're actually playing through a story. A story will unfold about your life and the people that you meet and the city that you're in as you're playing through it. Another shift, mopping the darkened hallways, delivering posts to hollow-eyed invalids, trundling corpse-laden gurneys to the basement. Let's begin our shift and see what happens. It says 10 seconds. And you'll notice that this pops up. It says menial employment. This is the, I think this um, represents the card that we used on there. And this is the aspect of the cards that we've used in this, um, or this is the aspect that's required in this, um, in this action. All right, let's get rolling and see what happens. And you can move stuff around so you can kind of customize your play area, which is pretty neat. It. So this has spawned another action. This action is recall my dreams. Once again, I dream of a glow beneath the filthy skin of the world, the light through the black wood, the pale door, the old man. 
that's going to come up in 18.6 seconds. And um, the result of this work is, um, it says halfway through your shift, the head porter beckons you aside. We won't require your services any longer, he says. Here, your last payment. I have lost my job. At least now I have little time to rest. Or I have a little time to rest and my health improves. And we've unlocked dream. That's what this is. So we've unlocked a new action, dreaming. And we've got two cards. We've got health. Which I'm going to drop down here. And funds. Let's, let's read those. I love reading all the different cards, um, and it's pretty dense, so it's hard to remember all of them. Health says, this is my body. There are other bodies, but this one is mine, and my mind needs it as a fungus needs soil. With enough vitality, you can gain more health. And what does it say down here? So it's got aspects of heart, two of them. The heart relentless beats to protect the skin of the world, we understand. The heart is the principle that continues and preserves. Got aspect ingredient, fuel, ointment, pigment, patience, all are consumed in time. So this could be used as an ingredient. It has an aspect of heart and also ability. Brain or heart or hand or eye. Most of us are born with most of them. Some more than others. Um, so this has aspect ability, so it means we can use it uh, in things that require an ability. And funds. Enough to support me for a little while in adequate comfort as aspect ingredient, just like health, right? So these are both aspect ingredients. Now, can we use these? So we can use health with work and we can use, we can't use funds with work. You can see it's not highlighted. What does it say when we drag health in there? It says backbreaking work for meager pay. This is the best I can do. Let's wait a bit and see what happens when, uh, when dream comes up. Fast forward it. We spawned another action. It says time passes. I need funds to live, but perhaps this recent upset in my circumstances is a secret blessing. Is there something to my dreams? There's a change in the air. So dreaming spawned this idea of time passing and we get two cards as well. It began when I spoke to the old man in the hospital. He knew my name, but he's dead now. The pneumonia. Why do I dream of him still? What is the cobalt light in my dreams? And that starts time passing. We get two cards, contentment and passion. And we'll, you'll notice that passion is at the bottom there. So that's one of our primary resources. Passion says, dull minds are never either intuitive or mathematical. Blaise Pascal. What aspects does it have? It has aspect, ability, moth. I knew a man who captured moths in a bell jar. On nights like this, he would release them one by one to die in the candle. Moth is the wild and perilous principle of chaos and yearning. Everyone everyone remembering all this stuff? And, and it's also ingredient. There's, there's just, there's so much in this game. And contentment says, I'm happy, I think. Contentment defends against dread, but contentment doesn't last. It actually lasts, in this case, for 60 seconds. And it has aspect influence, this is a new aspect, an echo, a resonance, an alignment, something that will fade soon. So I'm not sure if every influence has um, a timer on it. And it also says lantern. Life is a pure flame, and we live by an invisible sun within us. Thomas Brown. Lantern is the principle of the secret place, sometimes called the house of the sun, and of the light above it. And it also has aspect uh, heart as well, just like health does. So time is going to pass in uh, 60 seconds, and I think it's going to take this fun. So we need one coin to kind of... This is the idea, this is like the survival aspect, where you constantly need to make money in order to make it to the next day or the next 60 seconds. Now, contentment. Can we use it here? Can't put that there. It says that card must have at least one of these aspects, ability or funds, or way or ill health or desire. So we can dream about an ability, money, a way, ill health or desire. We have funds and uh, do we have ability, an ability? 
Oh, health. So we could dream about funds, what does it say? It says, purchase a tincture of opium. In times of a special crisis, I might visit a discreet pharmacist to purchase a tincture of opium and make my dreams sweet. But only in times of a special crisis. This is an expensive and risky way to gain contentment. It might provoke sickness or despair. And it said here that it uh, defends against dread, so... This is something that we might need to do in a pickle if we have to defend against dread and we need contentment. Want to? We want to try to remember that. It's there's a lot of little things like that in this game though that are really hard to remember. Um, I don't think we need this right now. We're not. We don't have to defend against uh, defend against dread. And there's a chance we could get sick. What about dreaming of health? Rest. Reconsider your priorities or risk yourself in exploration of the kingdoms of sleep. Risk yourself in exploration of the kingdoms of sleep. Sounds tempting. Passion. Says the moonlit road. I know this dream. A road crests a hilltop. And the air is silver bright. That sounds... That sounds promising. Contentment. Um, can't use on anything right now. We could also use passion in work. We can use health there. Backbreaking work for meager pay. Is this the best I could do? We could use passion. It says, I used to paint. I could paint those sites I half remember from my dreams. I might sell something. I probably won't. We can use funds there. Nope. So I'm interested. I think I'm going to... We're going to need some more money. Um, so let's work using our health. And we're going to dream about passion. See what happens. It's a moon that appears. And it says, I know this dream. Road crests, a hilltop, and the air is silver bright. So that's the same thing as it said before. And it says lore. There's a slot here for lore. If I engage in an occult practice before I sleep, I might find the way to deeper dream. So it's looking for a card with aspect lore here. Or it also says, Way, the wood. I've learnt the path to the wood, the tangled darkness that grows around the walls of the Mansus. Though the Mansus has no walls, I can dream with this to return to the wood. This can only exist once. I don't know what that is yet. But we don't have any lore to use, so let's see what happens if we just dream about, about uh, passion alone. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. Did I read this? With enough glimmering, you can study to gain more passion. We don't really have anything to do. We're just waiting for time to pass. Our work to be completed and our dreaming to come to fruition. Everything's gonna just come. And we're gonna lose our contentment, I believe. Yeah. So as soon as time passes, it says time, the sundial's shadow passes. I must have funds to live or I will become ill. And notice that there's a magnet here. It says the shopkeepers will have their due. I must pay it or starve. So it grabs a card to fill its void and it's looking for funds. And there's a bunch of different um, actions that have these uh, magnets. And you need to be careful because sometimes it could be a negative thing. It can be, like, remember we saw that um, contentment defends against dread. There are some actions that will suck your dread in. And if you have it on the, if you have it on the, the your, your table, it can suck it in and, and bad things can happen. So you have to be careful not to let um, events occur. Yeah, and some events are unpredictable, but you don't want events to occur that could have a negative consequence if you've got a particular um card on the table that this magnet will will suck up and we spawned something new a bequest arrives a letter from a solicitor the old man at the hospital the one i dream of has named me in his will i'll hear more soon so to wait 30 seconds to hear more about this will from the old man that we heard about earlier uh at the hospital 
We've got our, we're out of money, um, but let's check to see what happened with our uh, unskilled labor job. The day is done, and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So we got one additional funds. You notice it says two, even though this um, this particular coin is, is tied up in time passes, it still, it still registers. So there's one coin and two coins. And we've got Vitality, but we're fatigued. And notice we have zero health right now. Vitality says, exercise or something rare has invigorated me. Vitality can be used with study to gain health. It lasts only three minutes if unused. Has aspect advancement, a taste of what might be. With enough of these cards, you can grow an ability. And I believe health, I think health was an ability. And this has aspect ill health. Perhaps I can rest and recover. work. Unfortunately, I don't think we can work. So we're using our health to work. So we'll have to wait on that. And I'm going to just throw Vitality down here. So there's nothing we can do with work. Um, this dream is about to come up. It's exhausted our passion, though. And then we're waiting on um, the bequest and time continues to pass. We're still dreaming. It says, her soul's nightmare, down I go. Dread, so we're probably gonna get, um, we're probably gonna get a dread card from this, which is not good. I remember that her so wrote this. I've levered up floorboards and wriggled down snugly. Now I am compressed beneath them like a hidden corpse. The air stinks of hot dust. My mouth is full of splinters. This time I haven't learned what I hope to learn, whatever that was. So we exhausted our passion um, and we got dread. I've seen too much. A nameless gnawing fear has its teeth in my hopes. An existential horror has aspect edge. All conquest occurs at the edge. One who dwells there is blind and cannot be wounded. Another is strong and grows stronger. Edge is the principle of battle and of struggle. Interesting. Sometimes these aspects give you a hint as to how to use them, right? One who dwells there is blind and cannot be wounded. Another is strong and grows stronger. It's an influence. Ill health, much like being fatigued, has aspect ill health. And induces despair. Can we use it with anything? We can dream about dread. I remember that I was different, but I can't yet remember how. Dread can be restored to reason with the correct resource. So, um, it, it's looking for a reminder. I need a little peace or a moment of happiness. Too much dread will destroy you. Contentment can cure it. So it's looking for contentment. So if we have contentment, we can pop that in here with dread and it will it sounds like it will restore it to reason. So you can see that like some cards have, um, have a cycle to them. But uh, we can't do that. I don't know if we just want to dream. And I don't think... Yeah, we can't even start to dream about Dread without that. Can't dream about Vitality. We can dream about um, our funds, though. Remember, it says um, to get Opium. This is an uh, expensive and risky way to gain contentment. And that's what we're looking for here. Contentment. So, should we try to dream about funds to get contentment, to get rid of this dread? Let's try. This game is all about experimenting, so let's give it a shot. 30 seconds. Um, we're about to get our bequest. Eleven cards this time around. 
The old man has bequeathed me a sum of money and a packet of peculiar papers. Poetry. Riddles. Metaphysical speculations. For the first time in months, here is some fuel for my reason. And we've unlocked study. We've got nine funds. If you want to uh, move a stack, you could just select the, uh, the number there. And you could stack similar cards on top of each other. So we've got a bunch of money, so we should be able to survive for a little while without having to work. And we've got our reason back. Or, sorry, a new reason, I should say. Um, and this bequest. A package of peculiar papers from my correspondence executor. I must study it using either passion or reason. Well, our passion's exhausted, but it's going to come back in 51 seconds. We could use our reason to study it. Um... I'll examine each item with meticulous care. So that's an option. Uh, the other thing we can use with reason, I think we can use it in work. To find clerical work. Find work which will spare my body, if not my mind. So ba I think what this means is, uh, remember we used our health to work before. This allows us to find a job that allows us to use reason instead of health uh, to make money. So... We're kind of good on funds, so I'm thinking we should use um, reason on the bequest. And then we don't need to work right away. Thirty seconds. We're still dreaming about money. We got contentment. Oh, that deep peace. But I should not do this again. So we got our tincture of opium. And our contentment. Now, no. Our health is almost back. Now this spawns something else though. It says, the place behind desire. Is there something to be learned from the satisfaction of desire? We're gonna find out in 30 seconds. We can um, dream about this dread and use the contentment. I remember that I was different before. What does it say about dread? Existential horror. Contentment defends against dread, but contentment doesn't last. So let's, let's do this. Should get rid of our dread. I'm curious to find out what's gonna happen in this place behind desire. And we're not going to work yet. Four seconds, a couple things are going to happen. We're going to have to uh, get some more money. So you see, as soon as it's expired, it sucked up that money. So now we only have eight disposable funds. We got our health back and vitality still hitting, still sitting there, of course. Um, and we examined the bequest, employing reason. My correspondent describes my dreams exactly. They use names that are instantly familiar. The house, the wood, the hours, the glory. They knew secrets beneath time and the skin of the world. A new curiosity burns in me. There's a note here. Directions to a bookshop. It does not advertise its wares. Interesting. We got a whole bunch. We got a reason back. So we could use reason in work. Uh, before we do that, let's see what else we can do. We got directions to Moreland's. Cryptic directions to the obscure address of a certain Moreland, a dealer in the rarer sorts of books. Which uh, we can use to study to find Moreland's shop. The directions to Moreland's shop are cryptic. When one deals in the kind of books my correspondent studied, one must be circumspect. Got the Watchman's secret. This is where the game starts to get pretty obscure. So far, it's kind of, it's made sense, right? Uh, you know, you need to work a job to make money. You dream to kind of progress your knowledge. Um, and use the money to make it from day to day. And you can study stuff. But now we start to get into some heavy stuff. Watchman's Secret. It has been expressed like this. Each hour has its color. But color exists only where there is light. It's lore. It's the first time we've gotten lore. 
Knowledge of the invisible arts. I can use it to attract followers, to perform rites, to open the way to the manses, to seek my ascension. Ore fragments can sometimes be upgraded with study with matching fragments. So we could study it, but we need a matching lore fragment. If I have two lore fragments of the same level and aspect, I can study them together to improve my understanding, or I can use another type of lore to subvert it. I don't know, maybe we got some more lore. It's a temptation, enlightenment. It has occurred to me that I hold the key to wisdom. This card will allow you to win an enlightenment victory if you upgrade it far enough. Dreaming about it might advance or change it. Aspect desire, my ultimate aim, there will be a price. The marks of light. I may seek immortality and enlightenment in the hour called the Watchman. His touch brings particular appetites and marks. Remember this all came from that old man? It kind of made me think like, hour called the Watchman. Was that old man related to the Watchman? Somehow. And then uh, notes on a possible collaborator. My correspondent had recorded his observations of me. He believed I had potential. He recorded his observations of someone else, too. With time and study, perhaps I can find that person. So, we can study the directions to Morlins to find it. We can study the notes to find a possible collaborator. I have a name, a description, a few tantalizing details. But there are a thousand, thousand faces in this city. Directions to Moreland's Shop are cryptic. One deals in the kind of books. Yeah, we already read that one. Um, can we use these in anything else? Doesn't look like it. Watchman's Secret. That's the lore, right? Can't can't really use that on this. We can't study X. We can't. We don't have anything to use it with. We've got Enlightenment. Oh, interesting. We can use it as work. So here's an example of a card that we can use in the work action, but it's probably as a corresponding card. So we need to use reason or passion or something else and then tack on enlightenment. Um, I think we want to, let's see if we can find a better job finding clerical work. That's so cool. It's gonna take us 10 seconds to find a new job. And... Not quite sure what we want to do next. If we want to find, um... Morelands or a collaborator. I'm pretty tempted to find... I think I want to find Morlins. I'm thinking that we can find some more lore at the bookshop, maybe. And we're clearing our mind. That's right, we're getting rid of the contentment. Or sorry, we're getting rid of the dread using the contentment. And then waiting the results of this place behind desire. See what happens. Fine clerical work. Glover and Glover have offered me a junior position. I start at eight sharp tomorrow morning. We got our reason back. That's good. And we got a new a new card. Junior position at Glover and Glover. My intellect should be put to better use, but the pay is better than laborers' work. If you don't attend this job regularly, you might suffer a demotion. Okay. Is there anything else we want to work at? What happens if we throw reason back in there? We can't. So we use that to find um, the clerical work. And now it's a supplementary card. So let's work our new job. The scratching of pens. The sourness of dust. The sighing of the young glover. The greedy gurgling of the elder. Diligence. Extra effort. It might help sometimes. Oh, there we go. So we can pop a reason in there. 
I will apply extra effort. Perhaps they'll appreciate it. So there's, there's an example of using like a supplementary card to enhance the action. And uh, I think you can like get promotions and stuff like that. I'm curious to see what's going to happen when this expires. So let's, let's continue. Notice our passion is exhausted, but it's going to be coming back in three seconds. There it is. This is something like enlightenment. Oh, we got a glimmering card. And that disappeared. Similar to passion, right? You can see it's almost the same card. My emotions run higher than usual. There are things I'll never understand, and those things will always be precious. But just now I am closer to them. Glimmering can be used to study to gain passion. It lasts only three minutes if unused. So we might want to study this. I personally kind of like putting the cards that I'm going to uh, use that action like around them just as a reminder. Because you'll see as we progress, you get so many cards. And it's hard to remember what you wanted to do. Um, I kind of wish that they had added like a way to like write notes on the on the play surface. That would be kind of cool. But I think the idea is they want you to use your mind, you know, um, much like the character in the game. They want you to experiment and learn and try to remember like you're expanding your mind of the game while your character is expanding their mind of this world. So glimmering, we want to study the glimmering. Uh, I might even put it. Let's put it, put it in order. Um, we have 178 seconds on this. We've got plenty of time. So we're going to study uh, the collaborator first, I think, then Glimmering. But let's see what happens um, we study when we try to find Moreland's shop. Ah, a new action. Explore. Now that I've found a location, I can explore it. Explore the city with health or followers. Explore locations or investigate the possibilities of lore. Exploration is often unpredictable. Let's pop that over here. Oh, we got an occult scrap. Secret histories are layered beneath the one we know, like the notes in rare wine. This is a detail from one of those histories. Exploring with this scrap of knowledge may uncover secret locations in the capital. Cool. Aspect of secret histories. History is the scar on the world's skin. Secret histories describe the unknown complexity of, of the world and its many paths. This is something that we can study, right? Oh, this is exploring with the scrap of knowledge. Okay. And we studied more than shop. An ill-lit street at an ill-favored bend in a lesser river, a soft yellow light through a grimy window. Mr. Moreland nods as I enter, but doesn't rise. I never ask the names of my clients, she informs me, before I have time to introduce myself. Unlocked Explorer. Here's Moreland's shop. The dim premise, premises of Mo Miss Moreland, who deals in rare and sometimes dangerous books. It only exist once. It's a location aspect. So we can explore this using this. Uh... Oh, we could study it too. Improve my knowledge of the invisible arts. If I have two lore fragments. Oh, this actually is lore. I think I'm going to put all my lore maybe in the middle here. You'll start to notice that there's some um, themes to the cards, um, so you can identify them a bit better. So if let's see what happens if we do this. That card must have at least one of these aspects, Occult Scrap. Oh, OK, so we need another Occult Scrap. So what happens if we do it the other way around? Watch in secret, which is a piece of lore. Oh, it has to have at least one of these aspects. Watchman's secret or a smith's secret. 
Ah. Because it's not, it's not the same type of lore. Okay. When we throw Morland's shop in the air, it says, Explore the city with health or followers course. So um, it's looking for a cost. And right now it's funds because we don't have any followers. Or we can explore this. There are places in the city where I can find extraordinary things. If I could sift through the clues out of history and rumor. Hmm. All right, I'm going to wrap up this first episode here, everybody. So we've got a couple things that we can explore. And we've got a few things to study. And we're just clearing our mind from this dread using contentment. We're starting at our new job at uh, Glover and Glover. We're putting in extra effort using our reason. And time continues to pass. And uh, we've got this temptation in the back of our mind, possible victory condition and some lore to explore. I always ask this on my first video for a new series. You guys can like and subscribe. It's the only time I do it. First video in every series. It really helps other people to find my channel. Hope you're enjoying this. This is a really cool game. There's, It's pretty complex. There's a lot to absorb. So let me know if you have any questions in the comment section or if you have any tips about the game or suggestions or anything. I'm, I'm cool. I'm open to them. Just don't spoil the way that the game goes if you're familiar with it. Check in the description for links to uh, the games uh, on the Humble Store and the Steam Store if you're interested. This is Luckless Lovelock signing off for now, and I love you all.